Oxygen is very important for sustaining life. Oxygen, along with circulation and blood pressure, is a part of our perfusion equation, which must be maintained at all times. We will learn more about perfusion in lectures to come. But if breathing is inadequate, or if something is interfering with oxygen delivery, then not enough oxygen will reach the body's tissues, and it will lead to shock or death. This is why we should provide supplemental oxygen to all critically ill or injured patients. Now, of course, oxygen delivery and airway management can be difficult in the wilderness setting, especially if you are acting as an individual. Most mountain rescue teams will carry oxygen into the backcountry with them, but even then, the O2 supply is limited and maintaining the patient's airway will require many resources. In this video, we will cover how to assemble an oxygen cylinder and review how to use various oxygen delivery devices. These patients are conscious patients that have an open airway and they're breathing. In the next video, we will review the airway management of unconscious individuals who are not breathing. To assemble an oxygen cylinder, you need an O2 bottle, preferably filled, a regulator, and an oxygen key or wrench. Oxygen tanks come in a variety of sizes. The most standard size used in the pre-hospital setting is size D, or also known as size M15. They are rather heavy, usually made of aluminum. Mountain rescue teams will often carry smaller tanks made out of lighter materials. No matter the tank, the setup is the same. The regulator allows you to control the flow of oxygen coming from the bottle. It's measured in liters per minute. This is important because different oxygen delivery devices require different flow rates. The regulator also shows you the pressure within the tank and manages the pressure coming out of the tank. Otherwise, it would be too great for us to use on the patient, potentially dangerous. Be sure the regulator has an O2 ring or gasket. This creates a seal between the regulator and the tank. Without it, oxygen will leak from this opening. The oxygen key is used to open or close the oxygen tank. It is strongly recommended to keep this key attached to the bottle or keep one in your pocket. Plastic O2 keys are very lightweight. Better yet, some tanks will come with a lever, making the need for a key obsolete. First, turn the valve opening away from you. Using the oxygen key, crack the tank to rid of any debris from the valve. This is simply a quick open and close. Next, attach the regulator with the O-ring in place by lining up the pins. Hand tighten the regulator into place. Now use an oxygen key to fully open the tank. Check the pressure. If less than 200 PSI, do not use. The tank needs to be refilled. Attach the oxygen delivery device of your choice and adjust your flow. To remove the regulator, close the tank valve with the O2 key. Drain the regulator of any residual oxygen. Then remove the regulator. Now let's get into the most common oxygen delivery devices you will come across and how to use each of them. A nasal cannula is used in patients who are not critical but still need a slight oxygen boost. It's simply two prongs in the nose and delivers a low flow rate of oxygen between one to six liters per minute. The concentration of oxygen delivered is about 24 to 44%. To apply, insert the prongs into the patient's nose. The prongs should slope downward into the nose. Loop over the ears, and adjust as needed. 
Oxygen face masks are used in critically ill or injured patients that are still conscious and do not need ventilation assistance to breathe. There are two kinds of masks. A simple face mask is a flexible mask that is easily applied by slipping over the patient's head. The flow rate can be set anywhere from 6 to 15 liters per minute and it delivers about 35 to 55% oxygen concentration. A non-rebreather mask has an attached reservoir bag and a one-way valve allowing the patient to breathe in a higher concentration of oxygen. The flow rate is anywhere between 10 to 15 liters per minute, and it delivers an oxygen concentration of up to 90%. To use, hold the one-way valve down inside the mask to fill the reservoir bag halfway. Apply in the same way you would a simple face mask. Be sure to pinch over the nose to create a better seal. To recap, oxygen is very important to ill and injured patients. Oxygen is given to breathing patients through various oxygen delivery devices. A nasal cannula is used for less severe situations at a rate of 1 to 6 liters per minute. Masks are used for more critical patients that need a higher concentration of oxygen. A simple face mask is used at 6 to 15 liters per minute. A non-rebreather mask is used at a rate of 10 to 15 liters per minute. This mask delivers the highest concentration of oxygen and is preferred. Thanks for watching this base medical video. We offer the first and only 100% online recertification for Wilderness EMT, Wilderness First Responder, and Wilderness First Aid. Learn more at base-medical.com. Stay safe.